Hey, it's good to have you back with us again on Faith Is Now. Hey, Dr. Brian Abbs here, and I want to talk to you today about you having confidence in Christ. Confidence in Christ is what you have to have if you're going to make this walk of Christianity. Because if you doubt Him, if there's something that you're not confident in Him, or maybe even confident in yourself, it's going to affect your prayer life. So again, today we're talking about confidence in Christ. Let's start with the scripture found in Hebrews chapter 10, verse 35 through 39. Cast not away, therefore, your confidence, which has great recompense of reward. For you have need of patience. Oh, wow, there's a word. You know, the Bible says don't pray for patience because patience comes through tribulations. Who in the world wants to have tribulations? But, you know, Jesus did say in this world you'll have trouble, but be of good cheer. I've overcome this world. Now, I think... In this world, you have trouble and be of good cheer put together. Doesn't make any sense to me at all. But the Lord knows what he's saying. You're going to have trouble in this world. Keep the cheer, the joy, the peace, the righteousness of God inside. Don't allow the troubles of this world to get inside and control your emotions. Because whoever controls your emotions, my friends, they control you. Allow the Holy Spirit to always have control of your emotions. Verse 36 again, For you have need of patience, that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. Now, there's a couple of keys there. You have need of patience, and then after you have done the will of God. You can't do your will, or the devil's will, or your friend's will, and then be expecting God to come. Remember, he's not the author of confusion, so we can't bring God our confusion and ask him to bless what he hasn't created. And then, So if you're confusion in your life, First thing we need to do is just say, Lord, forgive me for this confusion. Forgive me for being the author of confusion in my life and allow the peace of the Spirit of God to come back into my life. Verse 36, I'll read it again. For you have need of patience that after you have done the will of God, you might receive the promise. For yet a little while, and he that shall come will come and will not tarry. Now the just shall live by faith. Man, that's a part of that passage of Scripture you need to just get in you. You're just. That means justified. Once you've been forgiven, once you've received, imputed to you by faith, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, you now become justified, just as if you never did it. You've been pardoned. That slate's been cleaned. You've been redeemed. Those curses of that sin, if you apply the blood of Jesus, will be washed away, will be broken off of you. The legal ground of the devil will now be broken because you've done it God's way. It says, after you've done the will of God, have patience so that you can receive the promise of God. Now, uh, verse 38, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man or woman draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. You can't get tired and draw back. You can't get afraid because the enemy attacked and maybe he got a good blow in there on you. But you, you've got to have faith and confidence in Christ that he's the author and the finisher of your faith. He who has begun a good thing shall finish that thing. Now the just shall live by faith. If any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. But we are not of them who draw back unto perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. That's right. Born again people filled with the Holy Spirit should be a don't quit mentality. We should have a DNA where we're not going to fail. We're not going to give up. We're going to keep on this, the fight, the good fight of faith and not give up until we've finished that, uh, that road, that purpose, that call that God has placed upon our life. So we're not of them that draw back into perdition, but of them that believe to the saving of the soul. First John chapter 3, verse 21 through 24. Beloved, if, now this is such a powerful scripture here. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, then we have confidence toward God. Now, that's a key. There's different keys to the kingdom. There are different laws of the universe. You've really got to pay attention when you read the word of God and listen to those little nuggets that give you the keys for success. Beloved, if our heart condemn us not, does your heart condemn you? Do you feel shameful? Do you have unconfessed, unrepentant sin in your life? If you do, then your heart's going to condemn you. But it says, if our heart condemns us not, if we're not in condemnation, remember the scripture that says, those that are in Christ, there is no condemnation to those in Christ Jesus. In Christ means you're forgiven. 
Not only have you received forgiveness, but you've forgiven yourself. Because see, if you're beating yourself down, if you're condemning yourself, God's not doing it. Christ isn't doing it. If you're beating yourself down, it's simply because you have not forgiven yourself. If our heart condemneth not, then we have confidence toward God. Confidence means I believe the word. The Bible says he's not a man that he should lie. I have confidence toward him. If he's the author and finisher of my faith, if he started a good thing, he's going to finish. If he's the alpha and the omega, if he's the great I am, remember, he's not the great I was, he's the great I am. So if he is who the Bible says he is, you know, that's kind of, I think, why Jesus asked the disciples, who do they say that I am? They gave him quite a few different uh, answers. Of Some people thought you was this person. You was Isaiah. You was uh, Elijah. You was this person. But then he looked at his disciples and said, and I believe he's doing that today through this program, and he's saying, who do you say that I am? Because who Christ has been revealed to you, if he's only a healer, you're only going to get healed. If he's only the forgiver of sins, then you'll only receive forgiveness of sins. But he needs to be the great I am. He is what you need in your life. But he's got to be your Lord. He's got to be your master. He's got to be your savior. He will be your healer, your deliverer, your provider. He is the all in all that we need. When he was hanging on that cross and he said it's finished, brothers and sisters, he didn't leave anything out. If he said it's finished, my friends, then it's finished. Beloved, if our heart condemneth not, then we have confidence toward God. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him. Because we keep his commandments. There's another key. Are you obedient? The Bible says one place, Jesus said, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. So whatever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Verse 22, very powerful verse. It's given us. Verse 21, if our heart condemns us not, if we've forgiven us, if we've allowed ourselves to agree. See, until you agree with heaven, my friends, you can't receive from heaven. You have to agree that if you've com uh, repented of your sins, confessed your sins, he's faithful and just to forgive you and cleanse you from all unrighteousness. Now you're the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus, been received by, imputed to you by faith, his righteousness. He took your unworthiness, gave you his worthiness, took your unrighteousness, gave you his righteousness. He made you a new creation, put that incorruptible seed inside. You better watch out. I might start preaching here any moment. I get excited when I get talking about the principles of the Word of God, about the promises of the Word of God, because, see, God's not a man that he should lie. And he said, if you please me, obey me, you can ask whatever you will, and it shall be given unto you. And verse 22, and whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. If you love me, you'll keep his commandments. He commands you to love, he's given you love. Shed it abroad in your heart by the Holy Spirit, because we keep his commandments and do those things that are pleasing in his sight. Did your response, your actions to people, your neighbors, your co-workers, the people in the church, the people that call you, the high maintenance people, can you say my response to them was pleasing to the Lord? Well, we have to stop and think about that one. If it wasn't, Ask God to forgive you, but if you said something wrong, did something wrong, and it wasn't pleasing to God to those people, then I believe we have a horizontal responsibility. A lot of people only try to take vertical. Well, I made it right with God. Well, did you sin against somebody? Did you speak wrong to them? Did you do a wrong business deal and, and cheated them on money? Go make it right. Apologize. See, that's not the way God would want me to be. And whatsoever we ask, we receive of him because we keep his commandments. And we do those things that are pleasing in his sight. And this is his commandment, that we should believe on the name of his son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as he gave us commandment. That's right, he's given us commandment to love one another as we love ourselves. So if your heart condemns you, you're probably not going to love yourself very much. And if you don't love yourself very much, then you're not able to treat that neighbor, to treat those other people the proper way that God wants us. So we have to receive love. He's not given us a spirit of fear, but a power of love and a sound mind. We've got to receive that spirit of love, then allow the Holy Spirit to flow through us. And as we pray in tongues, allow His Spirit to flow through us. His love is shed abroad in our heart. Receive the spirit of love. His love shed abroad into us. 
Now we've really got no excuse. We've got the love that's supernatural to help us to obey His commandments. We've got the love that's able to, to love the people. Because see, God doesn't want to pe- see the people say, oh, this person is a nice person. They've loved me. They're going to say, man, they've delivered to me a love that no human ever has. So God must be in them and working through them. That's why, see, if you're an ambassador, you're not to represent your own kingdom or your own self. You're representing the King of kings, the Lord of lords, the kingdom of the great I am. And this is the commandment that we should believe on the name of His Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another as He gave His commandment. Verse 24, And he that keepeth His commandment dwelleth in Him, and he in Him. Hereby we know that He abideth in us by the Spirit which He has given us. Man, I know that He's there because His Spirit's there. His Spirit drives me. His compassion moves me to forgive people, provide people, support people, love people, uh, to, to give grace to people when they mess up. Come on, you have bad days and you flesh out and you do wrong things. Don't you want to be forgiven? You know, as quick as you and I want to be forgiven when we confess our sins to God, we should forgive other people when they've done wrong. And some of these people aren't going to ask for forgiveness. Maybe they'll never even admit they were wrong. But I believe God wants you to not only say, Lord, I forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Then we even need to go farther and step into an anointing and a presence of intercession. As we step into that intercession, it's going to be just like Jesus did, just like Stephen did. When, when Jesus was dying on the cross, Stephen was stoned and being killed. That day. He said, Father, don't hold this transaction this, uh, this things these people did, don't hold this sin against them. Man, you're dying, they're killing you, and you're asking for them to have grace. Man, that showed me Stephen truly was full of the Spirit of God. That truly shows me that Jesus was the Son of God and full. Matter of fact, the centurion standing on the side said, oh my gosh, this truly must be the Son of God. And he that keepeth his commandment dwelleth in him, and he in him. Hereby we know that he abideth in us by the Spirit which he has given. 1 John chapter 5, verse 14 through 15. And this is the confidence that we have in him, that if we ask anything according to his will, he heareth us. And if we know that he hears us, whatsoever we ask, we know we have that petition that we have desired of him. Hmm. And we know that he hears us whatsoever we ask. Jumping up into verse 14. Let's go back there again. If we ask anything according to his will. Hmm. Jesus in the garden said, not my will, but your will be done. He taught us to pray when he's teaching the disciples to pray. He said, our father, which art in heaven. See, up to this, if you go back in the Bible in the Old Testament, every prophet, Samuel, Elijah, John, the Bible, all these people, they would pray to the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And they called him God, and they called him the creator. They called him the provider. They, ca- they called him the, the redeemer. But they called him as God. But Jesus is now preaching a type of prayer saying, you are Father. He, no one ever talked like this. To, to, it was it seemed blaspheming and wrong to, to make yourself equal, to be a son, to call him Father. That's why Jesus stirred so many of the religious people up. I hope it doesn't stir you up. I, I hope that you know that the Bible says, to as many as believed in his name, he gave the power to become sons. Well, if he gave you the power to become sons, then my friend, shouldn't you call him father? An orphan wouldn't, but if you've received the spirit of adoption, you're going to. If you get into the word and find out his will, you pray his will. We have this confidence that we know that he hears us. And if he hears us, hmm. I believe that, I'm going to say it, just said it, we'll repeat it. I believe that we will find his will when we get into his word. Everything Jesus did, he said, I didn't come to fulfill my own will, but I came to do the will of my Father. Sir, ma'am, young person, old person, doesn't matter who, if you really aren't sure what the will of God is for your life, get into Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, the Synoptic Gospels, then into the book of John, and just watch Jesus. Look and read everything that he did. He only said what he heard the Father say. He only did what he saw him do. He came to do not his will, but the Father's will. So we have 
God in skin. That's what Jesus was, God in skin, showing to mankind. I put it on paper, some of you can't read it. For the people that's watching today and you never went to school and you don't have the ability to read, or maybe you're blind and you can only hear, faith is going to come by hearing you even in a greater way. But I'm telling you today, Jesus did and fulfilled the will of the Father. We can see the will when the leopard asked him, you can, if you will, and the word will translates there as desire. And Jesus says, I will. Or he was saying, I desire. I desire to heal you. If you're watching today, I believe he desires to heal you. He stood and was tied to the whipping post. He was beat. By his stripes you were healed. And Isaiah says, by his stripes you are healed. That's pre-Calvary. Peter then quotes again, after being filled with the Holy Ghost, this is post-Calvary, post-resurrection, meaning after. He said, by his stripes you were. Isaiah said, you are. G uh, Peter said, you were. That means now this is actually in effect. When the psalmist David, he was a prophet, and he says, you'll know it's the Messiah, Psalms 103, verses 1 through 5. He says, you'll know the Messiah when he comes that he's going to heal. Let me quote it to you. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and bless his holy name. Bless the Lord, all my soul, and forget not all his benefits, who forgives all your iniquities, all, not some. If you're watching, say, but you don't know what I've done. You don't know the sin. I've murdered, I've raped, I've extorted, I've taken money, I've, I've taken bribes, I've done something wrong. No matter how great your sin, my friend, his love is greater. Do you hear me? His love is greater than your transgression, your wrongdoing. You can become born again today. You can become to where your heart condemns you no more if you just receive that amazing grace and that love of the Lord Jesus Christ. I believe we'll find His will in His Word. Get into His Word and read. And if you can't read, then get Bible and audio or get someone to read it for you. Faith begins where the will of God is made known. Faith revealed must soon be acted. The minute you know it, you hear it, you've got to act upon it. Faith revealed must be soon acted upon. Hesitation, the Lord revealed this to me when I first became born again. Hesitation strengthens rebellion. Hesitated faith soon becomes diluted and polluted and then weakened and it will become shelved. Faith has a time slot and a time season for us to use it. Just like the manna was only for that day. If they tried to take some and save it for tomorrow, it would rot and there was worms and it ate away. He said, Lord, provide my daily bread. Daily bread, the word of God. Jesus is the bread of life. Uh, daily we should get faith. His mercy and grace is renewed every day. So every morning I go and say, Lord, I partake of that grace and faith that you renew every day. Renew it for me. Let me participate. By faith, I put a demand on it, pull on it, receive it so that I can have grace for my brothers, my sister, my wife, my children, even myself. Without grace and faith, I will condemn myself, then I won't be confident toward God. 1 Corinthians 2.14 But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. If we walk carnal-minded, then all the God stuff, all the forgiving, all the loving is going to be foolish. We will never be confident in something that we feel is foolish. We must have fellowship and communion, my friends, with the Spirit of God. The closer the relationship we have with Him, the more we're going to trust Him. The more we trust Him, the more confident we're going to be in Him and to be in His Word. Numbers chapter 23, verses 19 through 20. God is not a man that He should lie, neither the Son of Man that He should repent. He has said, and shall He not do it, or hath He spoken, and shall not make it good. We're seeing here that if he says it, he's going to do it. He's not a man that he should lie. And he's not going to have to come back and repent because it was like, I said something, but I didn't do it. That's not God. He's not a human being. Behold, I have received the commandment to bless, and he is blessed, and I cannot reverse it. Oh, my gosh. My blessing's not going to be reversed. That excites me. Does it excite you? Man, it should. Jeremiah chapter 1, verse 12. Then he said, the Lord said unto me, Thou hast well seen, for I will hasten my word to perform it. We mustn't live by hearsay gospel anymore. We need to investigate the word for ourselves. Get into the Bible. If you hear the preacher, 
Just don't say the preacher said. Say, let me write down that scripture. Go find it myself. Highlight it in my Bible. Maybe underline it. And get you four or five scriptures in whatever area you're having a problem in. Begin to study. And you're going to begin to find the answers to your problems if you go to the Word of God and say to the author, the Holy Spirit, come, reveal your Word to me. Open my understanding to understand the Scriptures. Hebrews chapter 4, verse 12. For the Word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Romans 10, verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the Word of God. So Hebrews 4, 11, which we just read, tells us God's Word is alive. The blood speaks, the Word speaks. Wait a minute. Listen. I believe you're going to hear the Holy Spirit speak. His sheep hear His voice. Are you His sheep? Have you chosen Him to be your shepherd, your Lord, and your Savior? When you read, listen by faith to His Word going to speak to you. Revelation to be revealed to you. In His Word is, now pay attention to this, in His Word is the power to perform or the ability to carry out the commands of God. If He says, go and sin no more, in His Word is the power to go and sin no more. You learn to hear His voice through listening to the Word speak to you when you read the Word of God. Remember, if it's alive, through listening to His Word. Remember, if it's alive, then it can communicate to you. When it does, revelation is revealed from Him through His Word. I've received more revelation, more things when I was sitting reading the Word and fellowshipping with Him, believing that He was with me while I was reading. If He lives inside me, He's not asleep. He's always awake. He's always there. I like a song that one lady, she sang, she goes, I don't want to talk about him like he's not in the room. I don't want to talk about him right now as I'm preaching to you and teaching to you on this television program, Faith is Now, like he's not present. He's present. I believe he's speaking through me. He's revealing to you his love for you, his grace for you. No matter how great or powerful your sin, my friend, his love is greater to forgive you, to redeem you. You've walked away, you've fallen, but you know what? He's prepared a fatty calf for you. He's, he's calling the prodigal home. Looking unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith, Hebrews 12, verse 2 through 4, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and is set down at the right hand of the throne of God. For consider him that endured such contradiction of sinners against himself, for lest ye be wearied and faint in your fright, for you have not resisted unto blood, striving not to sin. But Jesus did. He was tempted by all things, but yet did not sin. Are you ready to get confidence in Christ? Are you ready to get rid of that condemnation that you have against yourself? Quit beating yourself up. Quit thinking that there's something else besides the grace and what Christ did that you need to do to get saved. It's, not, it's by grace through faith that you are saved. Not, not, not a, not a, not a, not of any works, or you and I would boast. You don't have to add uh, punishing yourself. Just receive, my friend, the grace of the Lord Jesus. Pray with me right now, will you? We're coming to the end of the program and I want you to pray with me to accept the Lord Jesus Christ. Or maybe you've been saved for a while, but you've grown cold and you've drawn away. Well, let's make a fresh commitment to the Lord today, either first time or renewing. You pray this prayer and if you pray it by faith, come to God believing that He is and that He's a rewarder of those that diligently seek Him. You can be born again or you can renew your love to the Master. I make a conscious decision. Come on, repeat after me. I make a decision to forgive every person that's ever done me wrong. I even forgive myself. I release the past and I let it go. I believe Jesus is the Son of God the only way of salvation, no other name to be saved under but the name of Jesus. I believe He died for my sins. I believe He was raised from the dead. Now, come into my heart and be my Lord and Savior. I believe you're the answer to my problems and the world's problems. Jesus is the only way, truth, and life. Be my forgiver, my healer, my Savior. I believe in you, Jesus. You are eternally and always will be the Son of God. Forgive me of all my sins and be my Lord. 
I confess with my mouth, I am now saved. I receive forgiveness. I am born again in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. You know, if you prayed that prayer, there's a phone number on the screen for WhatsApp where you can text me or you can send a message. There's an email on there also. Email us and tell us that you just rededicated your life or you became born again. We want to hear and rejoice with you. And we're going to leave that up there because we're going to pray now a prayer for healing. When we pray for that healing, if your pain leaves, your tumor dissolves, uh, your eyes open, your ears, whatever the problem is, we want to know what God's doing in your life. So let's do that right now. Let's pray. Put your hand wherever the pain, if you have a tumor, a, a hernia, a growth, your, your vision's bad or gone, hearing, deaf, whatever. If they're somewhere in the room and they can't hear or see, put your hands on them and be my hands for me today. Put your hands there. We're going to pray. As soon as we get done praying, I want you to get up, stand up, walk, do something, check for the pain, check your eyes, check your ears, do something by faith that you were never able, been able to do since the sickness or infirmity came upon you. If there's pain in your body, lift your arms and legs. Do something you couldn't do before in the name of Jesus. You got your hand there? Are you ready? It's only going to take but a second. In the name of Jesus, I break every curse, spell, or incantation, every bit of witchcraft off your life. I command those spirits to leave, and I forbid them to come back in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit of infirmity, sickness, and disease come out of your body. Cancer, leave in the name of Jesus. Spirit of death, spirit of witchcraft, go right now. Spirits causing uh, hernia growth, tumors to grow, come out never to return. I curse the blood vessels feeding them. Stop feeding those tumors now. I command those tumors. I curse them exactly like Christ cursed the fig tree. Tumors dissolve now in the name of Jesus Christ. Blind spirits come out in the name of Jesus. Vision be restored in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Deaf spirits, mute spirits come out never to return. I see, ears hear, tongue be loosed in the name of Jesus Christ. Arthritis, bursitis, fibromyalgia, get out of these joints now in the name of Jesus Christ. Your power's broken. I thank you, Holy Spirit, for lubricating all those joints, all those parts of the body. Paralytic spirits causing crippling arthritis. Uh, get out of those wheelchairs right now. Get out of that sick bed. Every long-term effect of COVID, I break your power. Lung problems, blood problems, cancers, leave now. Life be restored. Vision be restored. Blood sugar levels be normal now in the name of Jesus. Try it. Do something you couldn't do before. Check for the pain, the tumor, and the growth. See the WhatsApp number. See the email address. Contact us. Let us know. I'm excited, but I'll be back here very soon.